Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm so happy to be back. Um, I'm back. Uh, again, we do this now on the first Sunday and the last Sunday of the month. Um, the good news, uh, next month is the first Sunday. But then um, uh, I have a treat for you guys for uh, those who listen, who uh, are on my channel. Uh, I, I certainly thank you um, for it all. Uh, seriously, uh, for the month of April, we have some good things. Um, I will be preaching the uh, seven, one of the seven words, seven last words at my church on um, Good Friday. Uh, so you can always uh, feel free um, to message me if you want the link uh, and be encouraged, not just with me, but just hearing everyone speak the last seven words. Um, and it's going to be a great day. So I just want to share that with you. Um, but I, uh, I I have something uh, new for you guys. Um, I feel like the Lord has been bringing me into kind of like showing more. I'm not just doing a lot of talking, but actually doing some showing. Uh, so if you've seen the video before um, you clicked on here, um, it was a how-to video of uh, how the Lord disciplined me. The last time we um, talked, uh, we talked about uh, how creating self-discipline. Uh, we're going to defer, uh, believe it was Second Timothy, um, yes, Second Timothy uh, verses three. Uh, chapter 3 uh, So one of the things that Timothy was talking about was how the Lord created self-discipline and um, You know One of the things that with self-discipline is our self-control and how we control ourselves. See it's one thing um, To be disciplined, but we have to be disciplined uh, in God In order to grow in God because God is trying to show us uh something new each and every day that that we shall not conform to the patterns of the world but the transform transformation of the renewing of our mind uh so one of the things uh i did after the video was i went on to uh instagram and did my first reel um and the link uh, for my Christian page and my main page uh, is on there and then my TikTok will be on uh, the link of the description uh, down below uh, but one of the things is that we really do have to have discipline and how God had showed me about why waking up at 5 o'clock every morning uh, just to spend time with him uh, and that takes discipline especially me 25 year old um, there's days that I go to bed very very late uh if i'm going to worship night on a sunday night and i'm doing that monday and i'm going to work um it takes discipline but one of the things that god is trying to do is show me that when i spend more time with him i understand situations so this video um is about seeking god's heart seeking god's heart of how to seek God's heart, and I'm just gonna give you um, a scripture, and I'm going, I'm gonna give you a scripture, and, and then I'm gonna touch base on this. So, Psalms uh, 105. I'm gonna read from uh, verse one all the way to five. So, it says, "Give me pray, give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known among the nations what He has done, sing to Him, sing praise to Him, tell." all of his wonderful acts glory in his name let the hearts of those who seek the lord rejoice look to the lord and his strict seek his face always remember the wonders uh, he has done his miracles and the judgments he will uh, he pronounced so the reason why i read that is because um we have to know that verse four See, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always, always. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, see, one of the things that we got to do is that we got to have a relationship with 
God. This past summer, um, I did from all the way from, uh, I believe it was Ju the middle of July all the way to August. I landed on my birthday uh, and I talked about creating a relationship with God. Creating a relationship with God is one of the most important things to do in your journey um, with Jesus. See, a lot of times, a lot of us can say that we're Christian. Um, we can say that we, 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 we know the Bible and everything, but you know how someone's spiritual life is based on the relationship with God. See, the Bible says, test the spirit by the spirit. You know that someone is very, very faithful when it doesn't matter what the situation looks like. They always seek God. They always put God first and never last. Prayer should always be the first thing we jump into, not the last. Okay, so um, here's the three things that I just want to I just want to share with you. So seeking God's uh, uh, and uh, after after his heart means that you're laying down your life for him. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. So in Matthew 16, 24 through 26, I'm going to read the New Living Translation and the Amplified Version. The New Living Translation says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If you, if any of you want, uh, wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. Verse 25 says, If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what uh, do you benefit if you gain this whole world but lose your soul? Is anything worth more than that than your soul? The Amplify version, and this kind of gives you context about what it's talking about. Amplify version says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to be my follower, and then again in parentheses it says, as my disciple, he must deny himself, means set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross. And then that, that means expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come. And follow me means believing in me and conforming to my example of uh, in, in living and if need be suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me for whoever wishes to save his life means in this world will eventually lose it and then it says through death but whoever loses his life means in the world um for my sake will find it and that is that means that is life with uh with with him for all eternity so when i say if i say me or him that means with jesus so uh don't i just want to do i'm reading the five version uh, uh as it is uh on my on my on my notes and then it says uh for what will profit a man uh, if he gains this whole world? That means with wealth, with fame, success, but forfeit his soul. Or what will a man give up in exchange for his soul? So that's why I always say, the Bible says, do not conform to the patterns of this world. See, this world wants you to conform to its ways, but God wants us to conform to his ways. If we want to be a follower of Christ, we got to conform to the patterns of the word, not the world. So take the L out the world and you just get word. The word of God is what brings life. That's why Second Timothy chapter 3 also says scripture. All scripture is breathing life into the existence. When we follow the word, we're able to understand the word. See, watch this now. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 10, new, the, uh, new, uh, new international version uh, it says, um, if, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I am trying to win, am I trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Am I trying to please people? If I were to try to please people, 
I will not be a servant of Christ. So you've talked about this before. Um, sometimes we try to please people and we forget that we're supposed to be pleasing the one true father of God. See, that's why the word says if he hated, if they hated him, they hated Jesus, they're going to hate you. So that's why don't be afraid to share your faith. Now, there's more. Because don't just think that uh, you can go on, on on Instagram, post pictures of your reading the Bible or or your your uh just posting scripture. But when you understand the word, you wanna share with people about the goodness of Jesus. But you also want to do it for yourself and have your own time spent with Jesus. Here's why. See this is and, and I shared this this the other day with someone. Um Get off YouTube, get off TikTok, get off Instagram, get off all that. The reason why I said this, because I said that the Bible, and I shared it with him like this. This Bible is your friend. This Bible is what's going to get you the success. Not what's on Instagram, because see, like I said in the beginning, test the spirit by the spirit. You know, people have different ways of interpreting this word. You might interpret it very different than I might be interpreting it. Not saying that I'm a false teacher. Not saying that I'm, I'm not 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 someone to trust. But one of the things I do is I put the scripture. I like to show you the scripture on here to encourage you to read the scripture for yourself, not just say amen. Because, see, if you're not reading the scripture for yourself, you may not understand it. But when you're reading it with me, you're going to understand what this Bible is saying. You're going to want to know more. You're going to flip to, okay, well, well, what else could I learn about this? See, one good, good thing about this Bible is it's a repetitive thing. But it's in different forms. You'll see a lot of the words pop up. But see, you want to go, You each day I could read a scripture, and then I say, yeah, I may have read that, but where's the revelation from it? Yeah, I read that, but I, I kind of want to know more. I want to know more to uh, this story. I Oh, you know what? I remember I read that in this version, uh, in this text, um, and I read this in um, this, this chapter, this book. So now I can un understand putting those two together into where it's talking about another reason why you got to make sure you're reading the word to for yourself and you want just so you can see god's heart for yourself not just watch a video and say yeah amen but you got to know that you got to be willing to suffer yeah that's a harsh word harsh word but i want to just share with you that the word uh, uh the word suffering means the state of undergoing pain, distress, hardship. See, in biblical terms, suffering uh, for God is part of the growth. So many things, so many people think that Christian is being quote unquote easy. A lot of people think that this is easy to get on these videos or this is easy to go on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and all that. Uh, but could I tell you the truth? It's not. Everything is not perfect. There's suffering in our journey. There's pain in the journey, but the pain helps us grow. Um, and and uh, and, and I'll pick more about this up uh, next week. But First Peter um, five ten says, and the uh, and the God of all grace who called you in. Uh, to his internal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore uh, restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast see one of the things is because he suffered you're going to suffer too yeah that sounds so scary but 
because he's went through it, he has to show you. He has to show you. There's times that I just sit and just cry. Cry because I think about what's going on in the natural and I know I need God's help. I know that that pain of losing jobs or friendships may be broken, a family might be we need, need to restore it, but that suffering that I'm facing, that's why Romans 8:18 8, says, everything that's happening in this natural, this world, uh, the Bible says in Romans 8:18 8, says, the suffering that we're facing right now is nothing compared to the glory later on. Going down to verse 24, it says the, the living hope. <laughs> Liddy, this is living hope. Living hope. I hope that one day I shall see Jesus again. One day after all this, I know that the pain, the suffering is because there's a living hope. One day Jesus is going to come back again. And one day I will be free with him. And then I want to share this. Seeking after God's heart means that you will continue to ask for guidance no matter what. Sometimes we think that God doesn't have time for us. But the truth is, God wants every minute, every hour with us. Something that can re, uh, produce fruit. Read, read John 15. Lily says, he is the vine, we are the branches. Whoever uh, bears fruit from him will produce much fruit. When we draw closer to God, God will draw closer to us. And that's James chapter 4. Yeah, James chapter 4 verse 10. There's another, and here, here's, here, here, here's, a, here's, a, here's an example. In Luke 10, 38 through 42, Jesus and his disciples uh, were on their way. And when he came into the village where the woman named Martha opened up the home, opened her home to him, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the feet, uh, uh, at the Lord's feet, listening to what he had said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations uh, that had to be made. She, she came to him as, Lord, don't you care for my sister uh, has left me to do all the work for myself? Tell her to help me. He, and then it says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried about and upset about many things, but uh, few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen the better what is better and it is it will not be taken away from her now the reason why I shared that because think about the story of Mary and Martha where Mary is just sitting at Jesus' feet Martha's trying to do everything everything else and, and trying to do all this preparation and sometimes we get so busy and I shared this with someone um couple months ago sometimes we get so busy with our things and yeah I'm busy you know I have to do this stuff with church I have to do this stuff with work I have to do this stuff with my mother and everything but sometimes we can't let those that busyness get distracted see sometimes we want to spend time with the Lord but we get distracted That's why, that's why that whole, that whole video about me getting up early is because I don't want to get distracted. That's my time. Five o'clock, I know no one's up. No one's up. Before I go to church Sunday morning, I'm up at four o'clock. Because before I prepare myself to do the sound system and, and, and whatever else is needed, I need to spend an encounter with God for myself. Doesn't matter if I'm preaching that day. Doesn't matter if I'm in the back, the front, wherever I have to do. 
My mind shouldn't be on that. My mind shouldn't be on what it has to do at work. But to seek God. One of the things I love is Sunday night, I end up going to a place called a resting house of prayer. And just being able just to know that that's the one time I'm not doing the sound system. I'm not in the back. I'm not in charge of anything. I don't have to do screens that we do at our church. But I can just sit there and rest in the Lord. And take so much time. All the time I need to just rest in God. So I just pray, friends, if you just need help and courage, spend time with God. Get off Instagram. Get off TikTok. Get off all the rest. Read the word for yourself. Because then you'll understand. I don't you read the word. And then you go on these TikToks and you, you understand the word so much better. You don't just say amen because it sounds good. But you actually work it. James chapter 2, what's faith without works. You actually go out there and you want to prove your faith. That's why I said we were, we were pleasing God, not people. Want to please God? Test your faith. Faith without works is dead. So I just want to encourage you, friends. Real quick, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for all those who are just in need of help and just want to seek you. God, I pray that, Lord, this year we can move, God, Lord, from pain to purpose, God, Lord. Lord, we can move, Lord, from not enough to enough. We can move, oh God, Lord, from, Lord, Lord, uh, weeping to, to laughter, oh God, Lord. God, I pray, God, in this season of move, God, Lord, in this year of move, God, we can understand that you are needing us to, to get closer to you. We thank you, Father. All those who are watching this video, even right now, all those who are sharing, whether it's on TikTok or Instagram or whatever you are, YouTube, God, we pray that you get the glory out of it every one of our lives and you can draw us closer because you would draw closer to us as we draw close to you we thank you in jesus name amen amen god bless you friends